There are many YouTubers who committed some of the most horrible crimes, such as assault, predatory behavior, and most importantly, murder. Therefore, in no particular order, here are 15 of the most evil YouTubers. JStation is a Canadian YouTuber who is best remembered for his 3am challenge videos. Before his entry on YouTube, he was also known for emotionally abusing his ex-girlfriend, harassed everyone who came into contact with him, and pushed away everyone in his life, including his own mother. He gained attention for his 3am challenge videos, while it helped his channel grow very quickly. He, re he received backlash for how fake they were, as he would usually contact a recently deceased celebrity with an Ouija board. One of the videos he made was about Etika, who sadly took his own life in June of 2019. In the video, Jay Sason does not do the Ouija board challenge at 3 a.m. as normal. Instead, he explains how, how he almost died one week ago at the time of creating the video. He would even mock people who suffer from depression. Jay Station also talks about how YouTubers who claim they were friends of Etika, but he says that they were lying and doing it for attention. He changed the name of his video a few times due to the backlash he received for it. JayStation's YouTube career would come crashing down in January 2020, where he uploaded two videos titled My Girlfriend Alexia Died at Rest in Peace and, and Saying Goodbye to My Girlfriend Alexia at Rest in Paradise. Many people were quick to call out JayStation for monetizing videos on his girlfriend's death, blocking his second channel and leaving links to his merch store. A few days later, JayStation uploaded a video where he tried to speak to her using a Ouija board. He would take these videos down and upload a video which he admitted that he made the whole story up and Alexia was alive. Alexia would upload a video to her channel in which she revealed some concerning details about her relationship with JayStation, such as him being abusive to her and her only doing videos of him because, because she was afraid of him. In February of the same year, JayStation was arrested for faking Alexia's death and also for assault charges. The following year, both his main channel and his second channel will get terminated for violating YouTube's terms of service. I think that JayStation getting banned on YouTube was completely justified, and hopefully we'll never see him off YouTube again. Brian Moreland Better known as ADP445 was a YouTuber who was best known for his edgy humor and content, and he would usually go on rants. In February 2020, ADP would reach 1 million subscribers, but he was denied a go play button due to not following YouTube's community guidelines. In July 2020, the cracks in ADP's character began to show, which started his downfall. He uploaded a video to get ahead of allegations that he knew would become apparent. In the video, he said that he talked to a girl who was 15 at the time on Instagram who dressed provocatively and made sexual comments towards her. After his, after his video was uploaded, details, details of the situation surfaced when several other his Instagram messages were published online. In one conversation, ADP, res ADP responded to a girl named Lucy who asked for a birthday shower for her boyfriend by sending a voice memo requesting her to see her boobs. He even, say, he even said that he did, didn't care if she was one. In November of the same year, a YouTuber named Cole Raven uploaded a video titled Another Underage Girl Exposed Him 7 in Total. In the video, he said that ADB had talked to 7 underage girls including one decoy account that he made. In April 2021, ADB's life would go, would go exponentially downhill. Chuck Gonstein uploaded a near one hour long video exposing ADP for attempting to meet a 13 year old girl. The entire dialogue between ADP and the 13 year old girl is really disturbing and disgusting, and I don't think I could read some of the messages between the two. ADP even, even revealed he was willing to exchange two news with a minor, and he even agreed that he deserved to go to jail. And the reason for all of this, according to ADP, was loneliness. ADP received tremendous backlash for his predatory behavior. Some even informed the police about the situation. ADP's YouTube channel was deleted not long was delayed not long after the video. He attempted to make a comeback several times, but but he would fail miserably. He he, he would even even legally change his name to and he would make another channel called ADP underscore four four five, but it was later terminated. I really believe ADP needs to go to prison for what he's done. Hopefully, we'll never see his face on YouTube again.
This person should need no introduction, as Onision has been despised by the YouTube community for many years now. Onision has been on YouTube for 16 years as of the making of this video. It's not surprising that he's been in almost every type of controversy there is. His first major controversy happened in 2011, while he was dating Shallow Hogginson. In the summer of 2021, he uploaded a video titled Shallow Forgot Me, where he said she was suffering from memory loss for up to 3 years. Unsurprisingly, Onision received backlash for not seeking emergency medical help for Shallow instead of filming her while she was distressed and frightened. The cause of her memory loss was due to a seizure, making Onision use his girlfriend's possibly life threatening experience for views. In the same year, Onision faced rape allegations from Adrian Jurgensen. He handled these allegations very poorly. He is also guilty of animal cruelty. This is responsible for the death of his pet Russian tortoise reptile after leaving them outside in a plastic container exposed to high temperatures. This, this created a, gr a greenhouse effect and robbed the container of oxygen, effectively suffocating the tortoise. Onisio naturally avoided taking responsibility for his pet's death, going as far as to blame his viewers for it by saying that they were just as guilty as him because they ate meat. And he even blamed his neighbors, saying Reptar died because they were noisy. In 2019, Chris Hansen, who is known for his To Catch a Predator series, catched creator's YouTube channel and began a months long investigation into Onisan, documenting the abuse of his ex girlfriends and his alleged grooming of underage girls. Since this began, Onisan has threatened Chris Hansen both directly and indirectly, and calls Chris, quote, a stalker and a hater. Due to Chris documenting Onision's controversial online activities, in January 8, on January 18th, 2020, Chris Hansen took it upon himself to fly to Washington State in order to get Onision's side of the story. However, as Chris went into the porch and knocked on the door, Onision called the police and claimed that Chris was, quote, harassing him online and had started an online campaign of harassment against him and his family. In January 2021, all three of Onision's channels were demonetized. I think we could all believe that Onision shouldn't be allowed on YouTube anymore. Nassim Sabs, also known as Nassim Akdam, was a former YouTuber who was known for promoting veganism and body bodybuilding on her four channels. Many of Nassim's videos were very questionable and concerning as time went by. Her content became more and more graphic. She was, a, she was an inspiring YouTube personality who was doing a nice job for herself before her channel got terminated off the site. She had two channels that had 11,000 subscribers apiece. She lived with her grandmother in Riverside County, California, and had a couple of her videos go viral on already on social media, leading to her growth. Shortly before her untimely death, all four of her channels were demonetized. March 31st, 2018, she was reported missing by her family and on April 3rd, 2018, the same stormed YouTube's headquarters with a gun, injuring three people before taking her own life. The, mo the motive behind her attack was revealed to be her displeasure with YouTube's policies and for being demonetized on all four of her channels. She had no way of making income anymore and felt YouTube was forcibly silencing her because of her veganism and got very angry, angry because of that. After the incident took place, all of her Google and YouTube accounts were terminated, along with her Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. You can still view some of her, her social media pages through the Wayback Machine. I don't know why somebody would get so mad over, over getting demonetized that would lead to them shooting up at YouTube's headquarters. Marcus Swolten is a Belgian YouTuber, better known as Lion Maker, who began his career in 2013. From the beginning, he focused on uploading Minecraft content, and with Minecraft being a popular gaming juggernaut that it is, this caused his, his channel were to rise in popularity very quickly. Over the course of only two years, his channel grew to over 500,000 subscribers. However, in 2015, his world would take a dark turn when Keemstar uploaded a video titled Lion Maker asked Minecraft kids for news, in which King interviewed a mother of a 13 year old fan of Lion Maker who had been asked for news by Lion Maker himself. Following this video, Lion Maker said that he wasn't the one who asked for those images and that he'd been hacked. In December 2015, 
Another minor, 15-year-old Henry H. D. leaked a Skype conversation that he had with Lion Maker, in which the latter had asked him to, have, to quote, have fun with him. In the same month, it was revealed that Lion Maker had been in an online relationship with a 13-year-old girl named Paige for Panda, who regularly appeared in his videos. Lion Maker pretty much lost his mind, and he admitted the allegations against him and posted a new photo of Paige for Panda for everyone to see. Somehow, his channel continued growing, and by the end of 2017, he would reach 800,000 subscribers. However, in January 2018, his channel was terminated. In December of that year, Paige for Panda uploaded a video titled My Experience with Lime Maker, in which she discussed her relationship with him, revealing that she was with him from the age of 14 to the age of 17, and that he was abusive towards her. Considering everyone had seen him post an explicit photo of her on Twitter, it's clear that she was not making any of this up. He attempted to make a comeback on a channel that he made following the termination of his original account in 2018, but that, but that account was also taken down on September 2020. With his reputation in shambles, he has completely vanished off the internet. Austin Jones is a former musician who was active on YouTube between 2007 and 2017. He began his career at the age of 15, uploading covers of well-known artists such as Panic of the Disco and My Chemical Romance. These videos helped him reach over 500,000 subscribers and over 20 million view video views. It's not surprising that the majority of his fan base was made up of teenage girls. In 2015, it was reported that Austin had been messaging some of his fans online asking him to perform acts of him on video. As these rumors began to spread, an anonymous 15-year-old girl created a petition to have Austin removed from the 2015 Van Swarp tour. The petition did not receive enough signatures, but Austin dropped out of the tour willingly and later uploaded a video of it to his channel titled Setting the Record Straight, where he fully admitted that the allegations towards him were true and apologized for his actions. In 2017, Austin Jones was arrested on two counts of producing child in 2019, Austin pleaded guilty to receive the material for which he was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison and is scheduled to be released on New Year's Eve 2027. With his YouTube channel terminated and all of his music removed from his from streaming services, it's safe to say that his career was truly destroyed by his actions. He let fame go to his head and he is currently incarcerated. The century is going to be short. Devin Erickson, better known as Not So Fantastic Devin, was a YouTuber who would later become an associate in the STEM High School Highlands Ranch shooting, in which he and Alec McKinney shot up for school in retaliation for the bullying that they went through. Devin was also the guy that girls on TikTok sent for. One person was murdered, and eight others were injured in the shooting. Devin claimed that Alec forced him into the shooting after threatening him over Snapchat. Alec has been sentenced to life in prison, and Devin is still waiting a sentence. Devin's channel is still up on YouTube, with the only videos being free live streams of a game called Dead by Daylight. Although he didn't have a huge following, Nick Bate, road named Nick Stoutsenberger, is a YouTuber who can be described as a low cow. He was discovered by the CWC board which is a forum dedicated to Chris Chan, where people compare him to Chris due to his strange behavior online. At first, people thought he was just a weirdo with some gross habits, like never showering, never wiping after he used the bathroom, and never brushing his teeth. They would later realize that they had something far worse on their hands, when he openly admitted to being a pedophile, and also stated that it should be legal for him to be that way. He also wrote songs about his fantasies regarding this detail about himself, which I'm not gonna play your name because they are really disgusting. His YouTube accounts are, are tame considering what a sick person he is, with most of his videos consist of him him just rambling about nothing. However, there, however, there is there is one disturbing video on his main channel, and in it he plays a seemingly harmless and innocent game with his child, who is Nick's half sister. However, Nick's sister will be the victim of a horrific crime committed by him. In 2015, Nick Babe was arrested after he was reported to the police that he had molested her. He was sentenced to a maximum of 40 years in prison, 
with a minimum of 16 and a half. Nick also had homicidal thoughts towards his mother, stepfather, and aunt, which considering how, how unstable he is, he is most likely would, would have acted on had he not been apprehended. And as of the maker of his, of his video, Nick is still incarcerated. He has appealed of his sentence, but it was denied. Nick is clearly a dangerous man, and I don't think he should ever be released from prison. Pekka Eric Alvinen, better known as Natural Selector 89 or Sturm Guys 89, was a YouTuber who became infamous for becoming a Finnish school shooter and mass murderer who was responsible for the Yokoa High School massacre on November 7, 2007. Pekka was a shy student who isolated himself from others and was a known target of frequent long term bullying. He started to display a change in his behavior, and one of his teachers re recalled that they had an interest in both radical far left and radical far left mo movements. His parents tried to get him help for his anxiety and depression by sending him to a psychiatric clinic, but was given antidepressants instead of being hospitalized. It seems that he was up to no good and that authorities needed to step in. Unfortunately, nothing happened, and on November 7, 2007, Pekka would head to his high school and murdered eight people with a handgun before taking his own life of a gunshot wound to the head. Pelotion Entertainment is a Chilean YouTuber who began uploading from the site in 2014 when he was 10 years old. He would upload videos of him sketching his stuffed animals and let's plays of horror games. Rarely, however, he would also upload some violent MS paint animations complete with blood, gore, and high pitched screaming. In late 2018, he uploaded a video called Torso Slap, in which he recorded himself shoving an open can of cat food into, his fa into the face of his cat, Jason Kruger. He was not having the last video of him abusing his cats. The next will be much worse. On December 18th, 2018, a video he uploaded and quickly deleted two weeks earlier resurfaced, showing him abuse of cats to a point where a player died of his injuries. After Jason Kruger's death, he, brought two, he bought two more kittens and also filmed himself abusing them as well, throwing one of them into his toilet. These videos are attracted worldwide controversy on social media, with people calling for his arrest. At one point, an angry mob shoved, showed up at his house to get justice for the abused cats. He shrugged off the hate he was receiving, saying that he didn't care about his cats. He even said that he wanted to murder his mother, and he also apparently tried to strangle his cousin to death. In the past, in September 2020, Voice Critical, aka Penguin Zero, uploaded a video discussing Pelucci's channel and how YouTube failed to do anything to stop him, despite his history of animal abuse, and that he inspired other channels to commit the same horrible acts. On September 29, 2020, Belugian Entertainment's channel was terminated due to violating ter YouTube's terms of service. His second account, Belugian Entertainment 2, was terminated on the same day. He attempted to make a comeback on a third channel called Satan, which he made on October 20, 2020. But this channel was eventually taken down in early 2021. I think Belugian Entertainment needs to go to prison for what he's done, and he's a very sick and twisted individual who can't control his violent tendencies. Tony4819, better known by his real name, Anthony Powell, was a 28-year-old YouTuber whose content revolved solely around spewing hate towards atheists and African-American women. He had gone through numerous accounts due to him being banned from his controversial videos. His subscribers noticed his worsening mental health and were concerned that he was a danger to himself and others after mentioning that he owned a shotgun. On April 8, 2009, Anthony entered the Henry Ford Community College where he was a student and shot and murdered fellow YouTuber Asia McGowan with a shotgun before taking his own life. Anthony's channel has been terminated from YouTube with Rhea was being the only way to find his content and the was are almost entirely lost. Trey Sessler, better known as Mr. Anime, is an anime and film enthusiast who formerly reviewed anime on his YouTube channel. He's known for being one of the very first people to kickstart the anime community on YouTube. 
He started his YouTube career in September 2006 on his own channel, Lance Cat Productions, at the age of 17. At first, his channel was focused on comedy sketches that he'd make of his friends. Eventually, he moved on to creating action videos, which were surprisingly violent, consisting of fighting scenes involving swords and real guns that were not loaded. These videos were quite violent and contained a lot of fake gore, which Trey seemed to have a fascination with. He would eventually switch his content style by uploading anime reviews with a nickname, Mr. Anime. In 2012, he uploaded a video titled, Mr. Anime is playing something. He never revealed what he was playing, but he said he would be taking a three week break. Prior to this, there have been a couple of worrying videos on his channel. His view of high school of the dead showed him holding a gun throughout the entire ch video. And another video showed, him, showed a clear intoxicated Trey testing a 9mm rifle. A week after he had announced to his viewers that he had found a new job in the film industry, it was reported that Trey had murdered his mother, father, and brother, and had destroyed the house and killed his pets on March 20th, 2012. He carried weapons and hundreds of hundreds of ammunitions to what to Wall High School down the street. His original plan was to murder at least 70 students at the school's pep rally. However, Trey backed out when it finally dawned on him what he had done. He then turned around and went to a friend's house where he confessed to what he had done. His friend then contacted the police and Trey turned himself in. Trey avoided the death penalty and was instead sentenced to life in prison. He requested his right to appeal for parole to be taken away, as he believed he was too much of a danger to himself and others to be set free. It's unknown where he'll be moved to next, but what we know is that he'll remain behind bars until the day he dies. Randy Stare, or as he would like to be called, Andrew Blaze was a YouTuber who began his career in 2008 when he was 16 years old. His channel consisted of comedy sketches, but the only thing he had going for him was that he had a decent camera. The videos themselves had zero production value and mostly consisted of juvenile humor and characters that were just kids toys. Eventually, Randy would change his content completely to a much darker and stranger style. He created Ember's Ghost Squad, a channel based around the character Ember McLean from a cartoon series, Danny Phantom. Randy had a deep obsession with the character, saying that the moment he first saw her, something resonated within him. Ember's Ghost Squad was a series made as a way for Randy to live out his fantasy of being able to live in Ember's world. The series was known for being dark, violent, and in some cases, disturbing. It was clear that the series was affecting Randy's mental health. He began believing that the characters he created were real, Claiming the character he made as a persona for himself, Andrew Blaze. Randy had decided that he wanted to die and be reborn as Andrew Blaze so he could join Ember's Ghost Squad for real. On June 8, 2017, Randy would head to the Wayway supermarket and blocked off all the exits to the supermarket and began firing everyone in his way with a shotgun, murdering three, three people before turning the gun on himself. Randy had always intended to take his own life but his attack of a super t supermarket was sighted via coin toss. It's hard to feel sorry for him though. His choice to take innocent lives as an act of revenge against the world that he felt had shunned him rather than trying to get help. If he had actually gotten help, free people would, prob would probably still be alive now. I think we could all agree that Reddy could have gotten help before his attack on the supermarket. Elliot Roger was born in Lambeth, England and moved to the United States with his parents when he was 5 years old where he was raised in Los Angeles, California. His father, British filmmaker Peter Roger, is best known for working as a second unit assistant director for the first Hunger Games movie. Elliot had a somewhat normal childhood growing up right until his parents divorced when he turned 7 years old. After that, it was a downward spiral of jealousy and envy for others having what he does it and unfortunately, the spiral didn't end until it was at the very, very bottom. He would upload videos on his YouTube channel where he would go on rants about not having a girlfriend and what other men have when he doesn't. 
For people who were watching his videos were concerned for his mental health. On, a on May 22nd, 2014, Elliot uploaded a video titled Elliot Rogers Retribution, which he outlined details of his upcoming attack and, mo and motives. He said he wanted to punish women for rejecting him and to punish a sexually attractive man for living a more enjoyable life in his. The very next day in East, La in East La Vista, California, however, Elliot Rogers would murder six people and injure 14 nervous before taking his own life in the process. He was 22 years old. The attack began when Elliot stabbed three men to death inside his apartment. Afterwards, he drove to his sorority house and shot three female students outside, murdering two. He then drove to a nearby deli and, and shot a male student to death inside. Elliot began to speed through East La Vista shooting and wounding several people and striking several others with his car. He then exchanged gunfire with the police twice during the attack, receiving a gunshot to the hip. The rampage ended when he crashed his car into a parked vehicle and came to a stop. The police found him dead in the car with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. After uploading his last video, Elliot emailed a lengthy autobiographical mans manuscript to a dozen acquaintances and family members. The document which he titled, My Twisted World, was, a was made available on the, on the internet and became widely known as Manifesto. In it, he described his childhood family conflicts, frustration over not being able to find a girlfriend, his hatred, for, his hatred of women, his contempt of racial minorities and interracial couples, and his plans for what he described as retribution. Elliot Roger was a man that let his jealousy and hatred for others eat him up as he got older, until he snapped. He was a man that had everything. He was rich and expected women to love him for his money. But when, when that wouldn't happen, he couldn't understand and decided to commit his acts of murder. His channel was terminated, but you could still find re uploads for, of his videos throughout the internet. And his manifesto can be found with a quick Google search for those who, of you that are interested. This one is only going to be a very short entry because there's not a lot of information. Alyssa Davold is a makeup YouTuber who is best known for murdering her two newborn babies in her home. These were back-to-back pregnancies between 2017 and 2018. In 2020, she was found guilty of these murder charges and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. I believe she could be considered as the most despicable person on this list for what she did to her two newborn babies. I think we could all agree that she could have gotten life in prison. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like on this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified for my latest videos. Be sure to drop a comment down below on what you think of this video. And until next time, I will see you guys later.